Hello and welcome to a third session on discipline between carrot and stick. I'm sure the last two sessions have just started you on understanding that discipline is more of a routine. It's a mental state of affairs. It's what athletes do for being successful. In our second session, we spoke about discipline in the school bus where we use one of the six models of discipline called logical consequence where when you threaten is not a right word but when you convey a message of punishing or reprimanding for a particular action you must follow it up and not have empty words and we had an entire case study on what TET teacher effectiveness and others concerned were Today, we have an even more interesting session 3 called Discipline in the School Toilet. All of us who have been to schools, we know that you actually understand a school's culture from the graffiti in the toilet. How good is your school toilet? Is it smelly? Does it stink? Are the seniors using it? Do the staff members come in? Is it well lit? We will discuss all of it in this session, the school toilet discipline episode. Now, here is a case study. Think of a toilet like that. Of course, I couldn't think of a more stinkier picture. I don't want it to be gruesome, but stall toilets are the ones which are designed and, and maintained with the least care in the world. I'll give you a case study of a five-year-old student, Jimmy. Now, a fifth grade student, sorry, which is an eight year old student. Now, eight or nine, ten years, these boys, Jimmy is a good boy. He's a kind boy. He enjoys school. And at lunchtime, he visits the school toilet. Unfortunately, the toilets are not in good taste. The washroom smells, they're dirty, and the toilet paper has run out. He decides it is best to avoid using the school washroom from now on. So here is Jimmy who is now not willing to come to the school problem. A reality check, isn't it? The toilets are the most distasteful place in the entire school. Now it's not over. One afternoon, he can't focus because he needs to go. He needs to pee. Not only can this strain is bad for his health, he is too distracted to learn anything. Jimmy is trying to control the urge to urinate because the toilet is not welcoming enough. Can you imagine his trauma if the worst were to happen and if he had an accident in the class? Imagine if he wet his pants in the classroom. How embarrassing it is for a fifth grader you would never understand unless you have been through that. Then the next day Jimmy wants to avoid a repeat of the day before. So at lunchtime he decides not to drink. He does not drink water. The afternoon sessions are tough because he's dehydrated. Dehydrations can result in headache, loss of concentration, lethargy and cognitive impairment. None of them an ideal situation for a young learner. What's happening to our toilets? The reality check is these toilets are a traditional school haven for bullying. Bullying in the school starts from the stool toilet. Number three, the school students' toilet are rarely visited by the staff. They are an abandoned place for the weaker sections of the society, the school students. Survey after survey has reported there are no soap. Forget liquid soap. Even a soap bar is not there in the toilet. The, the tissue paper is out of question. Simply put, the designs of a school toilet is hurting the school performance real bad. So this is where we stand. You know, there is a great research which says a school is known by the three L's. The laboratory, the library and the laboratory. You see, you look at a school's lab and say, wow, that's an awesome school. You look at the content of a library and it breeds conversations, discussions, expressions. You look at the school's laboratory and you say, whoa, this is a neat and unstinking place. And I think our schools need to understand the really, really bad place. Now, where do we start with? I'm just throwing you common examples. One of them, the biggest problem is graffiti in the school toilet and our laboratories is a sign of school health. While this photo may be extreme, I'm sure we are not looking at a wall painting here, but look at your school toilet. Are obscene gestures and words sketched out? Or is the place smelling of cigarettes, 
chewing gums are pasted and waste papers all around maybe there's a leaking pipe which is telling a completely new story what a school is portraying hopefully by the end of the session i'll give you a solution to the graffiti problems in a school the vandalism in a school and the obscene gestures that the toilets are presenting we are now suffering from what is called the toilet phobia school children effectively hate their school because of the poor hygiene that the toilets providing 40% of secondary school girls report on holding it in so they don't have to go to the school toilet the consequences are reaching to health we have damaged kidneys and urinary tract infection because of this toilet phobia in our schools what are the problems where are the problems let me run through some of the problems school i have run enough of it but some even more common things number one if you look at a school toilet look at the gaps there there are gaps where sunlight can come through imagine it today in the world of smartphone with just a camera no child is safe to defecate or urinate in a school toilet a pan or a nicker one shot of camera and it's on facebook it's on instagram and the boy will lead to depression and even suicide so when you look at a school toilet please don't look at a mall toilet where there are big gaps around i'm not a favor of gaps you need to have toilets which are not which have a decent level of secrecy to it i'm not saying you have cubicles that are completely closed but imagine if some a elder boy can just peep through a toilet it's not a safe toilet you are always looking out you are controlling your pee you don't know if you're comfortable in a toilet this is not good habit so where do we do i have i have a list of things that should not be in a toilet let's look at things that should be in a toilet i think that's where we look at let's look at some of the good good practices that our school toilets should have number one good practice is keep wash basins in the cubicles i know suddenly it looks very radical but you see the hand basins are usually outside the bowls where the cubicles are children can only wash their hands obviously for privacy reason accidents or personal hygiene issues cannot be resolved at a public basin so at least some basins must be inside the cubicles you know what the designers may call it as you can look at it the air, airport or airline uh, toilets airline toilets is usually a unisex i'm not we will talk about that much later but toilets where children can have absolute privacy but also a specific key that someone should have so kids do not lock themselves in let's say a, a, as bad as a depression attempt and this can be reached but you must understand that as the girls are growing up they might have certain things they might want to wash off a cloth piece something else and these basins for washing the hands immediately or or, or simple things that like dustbins inside the toilets are mandatory remember these rules and you will make your toilets really a great place to be okay now from a completely different issue of hygiene to a different issue of aesthetics i think some music in toilets what am i talking about it's about the oral ambience in school schools have it you know you can see something playing around you can have some some messages some 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 noise which is which is pleasing to the ears is a straightforward thing why do we see that because it masks unfortunate sounds and you understand what i'm talking about children burp and fart inside toilets and you want certain noise that can cover it up so you don't have to go and flush your toilet so that the noise noise come in it's something which is civilizing it is a certainly a very clear signifier of change that the school is rethinking even just the message that you are going to give putting some speakers in the toilet is a message that you are rethinking alone and you know you, know, you can allow students to decide what kind of music goes in it's a it's more of a democratic choice inside a school rent another very very important issues in school toilet is make sure your toilets are well lit you you will do no harm to toilets by having extra bulbs and lights and ventilation in your toilet you must have toilets which are open aired as in some kind of fresh air come in i think the stinking smell the ammonia smell in a toilet is is enough to you know enough to take to your biology lab and 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 you know uh, uh, dissect a frog 
so another very very important thing is make sure your toilets are really well lit and hopefully you can have some fragrance in a toilet make those beautiful you know this is what you see in malls and airports why can't school toilets be still well spent and and then you understand the children will will use it properly another very important area in a school toilet is have a small bench and a rack what happens is children might take things around in a school toilet. I'm not saying that school toilet should have, but sometimes there's no waiting place in a toilet. And kids, because of no waiting, proper waiting place, they stand right in front of a cubicle and someone is peeing or defecating. And that's when you see the shoes and that's when bullies come in and there's a knocking on the door. But if you have a place where they can just put something there, it could be a bag, it could be the shoes, it could be how you see the changing rooms in some sports and, and gymnasiums. Look at a school toilet like those changing rooms. I think you've got enough points with you. Work with the cleaners. What I mean by work with the cleaners is these, your maids are the people, are uh, the ones who see the toilet every day in and out. When you redesign a toilet, as hopefully after this session you will, you will look at it that they are the ones who will have the best and the most effective ideas. Working with cleaners gets you to the bottom of the problems. They will tell you the gap between the bowels was not right. They will tell you the surface needs to you know, clean well. They will tell you the liquid to be used. They will tell you the disinfections to be used. And that is when it becomes very important. Well, of course, I have a lot of things to share with you. I can't stop sharing this beautiful story. There was this particular girl's toilet and a girl's hostel, which was being vandalized by these young girls. What they were doing is they would go and kiss the mirror in the bathroom and and you know these girls i've never been to a girl's uh, hostel for sure i've never lived there but they are, i think they have different shades of lipstick so they will put all the new shades you can think of in the market the burgundy and the tokyos and and the cream and the rose pink and they will kiss the washroom mirrors by the time you see the mirrors they are actually completely with all kind of kisses in it Every time a new superintendent will come, they will threaten the girls, they will call the girls, they will try to scare them by saying parent letters, they will warn them, they will take away the privilege. It only increased because the girls found a way to rebel against the authority. Until one new teacher came in and she said, I will look into the issue. Like with the staff room politics, everybody thought, oh, she's trying to be smart, we've done enough. But she did something really smart. She spoke to the cleaners and she said, I want you to come on that specific day and do that specific way of cleaning if the day I call. And this new teacher did not call the entire girls, she only called the 7th graders. She thought just the right age at being senior enough and the gossip will take care of the rest. The 7th graders came in pushing and you know making noises saying oh we'll get a good little lecture and now run down tell times happen. She said girls I only want to show you how does this maid clean the the mirrors that you you really spoil and she said ma'am can you please show how you do it or Aya or Didi whatever you call in your school and as pre-plan she took the the mop she put the mop in the cupboard oh yes in the in the in the in the pot there she took the water from the pot and cleaned the entire mirror and then you realize the miss the word that have all these young girls complete silence Nobody spoke a word, how awful they would have felt, the word spread and then the vandalism of the school mirror did not happen. So here is a smart teacher understanding how to deal with discipline problems. Oh well, I, had, I was embarrassed to tell you the last one but this is important. Now what about the boys toilet then? Okay, boys toilet have a big problem called the boys poor aim. I know that's why Mumbai Indians not doing good in, in IPL this year, we just not hitting the wickets enough. It's, 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 a high, it's, it's, it's a strange report, but a shameful one, but an average male misses the toilet by 1.5 liters and on average, this is an average, I mean, they, are, they will spill their urine and then the ammonia spin and the stench will come. So there was a whole idea, how do you design a school toilet? Believe me, you have enough on YouTube. I've just given an example for the pre-primary. If they are, you know, they will, children have different ways of urinating. So when they do a urination as this way, they usually they put a small fly there, a small kind of a, a roller where the children are expected to 
urinate on that and suddenly they become more focused and they don't spill the urine you must have the the urinals little low for a lower section because that's when the urine get collected then you must have small mats there so urine doesn't spill back on you and your clothes you must have mops down or small small those those rugs out there of course the hard plastic ones so it can be immediately washed small things will help the boys to clean themselves and the toilet would be happy one last thing before we end up is have great stickers great messages be a bathroom superhero lift the seat aim flush the toilet you know and tell them how good they can be for others believe me that's a research that has happened and i think dan, uh, dan chip said in his book where if you tell people to be good for others they become better instead of asking them just to be good that's all so this is an entire episode on discipline in the toilet i hopefully took you about not just discipline but what toilet aesthetics should look like to have a great culture two quick questions we got when we were doing this should schools use cctv in the toilets okay good question yes and no usually we say no because it's a very private area but yes it needs vigilance if there is a cctv outside the toilet it's good enough you don't need inside the areas where they're really urinating and defecating because that's too much intrusion into privacy but perhaps if there is a huge issue of vandalism you might rethink so there's yes and no to it but primarily i am no for it as long as there's vigilance there what about mixed gender toilets okay unisex toilet as you call i gave an example of the airline toilets well possibly for the primary grades absolutely for the pre primary grades and no for the secondary grades you have secondary boys and girls give them some space give them some privacy hopefully the school will develop a good routine of a great toilet as we close i promise you to explain and answer the graffiti problem so here is the answer in a different psychological condition it's called the broken window theory you see when you see a broken window as professor james wilson and george kelling puts forward in 1980 that if it's not repaired the other windows will be eventually broken why it happens is because a broken window sends out a message that no one cares there is no consequence to committing the vandalism this theory applies to the washroom in your toilet it only takes one pupil to scribble graffiti on the cubicle wall this gives the permission for others to vandalize thinking they they will get away with it graffiti will then escalate to broken doors flooded sinks and expensive repairs so what you need to do if one graffiti happens on day 1 clean it at whatever cost it is to your institution immediately do it this was done by the new york police in the subway graffiti and and there was huge crime in new york and the new inspector of police says let's clean the graffiti he said no there is a problem on street in drugs in violence in gun culture he says no let's clean the graffiti as the graffiti got cleaned day in and day out the crime in new york decreased that's exactly what i'm suggesting in your school toilet you don't let the graffiti there believe me the school culture will improve thank you so much for listening to this second third episode of discipline between carrot and stick i am your host daud waid you can email me at daud@skyeducation.in and you can tweet i love the tweets and the responses at ceo teacher i will look forward to see you in more episodes till then i'm sure you can have great work with toilets in your hand Have a great discipline culture in your school. Bye bye.